went. Hello, and welcome to So It's a Show, the podcast where we are trying to attempt to keep up with Lorelai and Rory's <laughs> pop culture references and find as many synonyms for try to keep up to attempt to <laughs> as possible. I'm Taylor. And I'm Kyla. And we are talking episode 107 Ooh. today. Uh-huh. Our episode 8. That's why it always throws us off. Yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and what's this episode called? This episode is not called You're Like a Crazy Elsa Clinch, unless you're talking about our episode. Which is titled that. Yes. <laughs> And the name of this episode is Kiss and Tell, because Ooh. guess what? There is a kiss, and Rory does not tell at first, but then she does tell mm -hmm. Lorelai. So, Yay. good, good uh, <laughs> clever title and accurate to the story. Mm -hmm. Good job, Gilma Girls. Way to go. But before we get into that, we do need to talk about something, Taylor. <sighs> Kyla, we do. New Gilmore Girls episodes? Question mark? Question mark. You were the first person I texted. I want you to know. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I texted you and immediately texted my mom and sisters after. I hope they don't <laughs> take it personally. <laughs> Kyla, what if this happens? I don't know. I don't know what it means for the story. I mean, Emily is in a great place. So, no more firing maids. Lorelai is married, so that finally got settled. Although, she's been divorced before. But, mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. settled. And Rory. Like, we will actually have to deal with her being pregnant. And we'll have to walk through the pregnancy and experience that. And I have no idea what that would look like. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so I feel like what I'm saying now, I feel like this is what I would have said even if we had, like, even if the episodes were 100% perfect and got everything we wanted and um, Lorelai and Luke were never had silly fights and Richard was there and... Rory and Jess were married and had twins <laughs> and were both achieving their dreams in a completely non, um, in a completely healthy relationship. Like, even if that's the case, I feel like I would still be saying, we don't need more episodes. Hmm. And I feel like I would have even said that before they came out because I feel like we were building up to the final four words. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Here's the thing. If they make them, I will watch them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Which is probably not helping the case for their non-existence, but I don't know. I, I'm on the side of, I think the original series is fantastic, obviously. It will live on mm -hmm. forever. I have all but one of the seasons on DVD, even though they're on Netflix, because... It's, I just want to have them. But the revival mm -hmm. episodes, I don't think I'm going to go back and watch over and over. So if there were more episodes, I will watch them. I'll be happy about it. I'm okay with that because I don't think it ruins what Gilmore Girls is. No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Although I do think also part of the reason I don't rewatch the year in the life episodes as much as just the length. <laughs> They're not as easy to put on the loop yeah. in the same way. Yeah. So. Although I have watched more than two of the original episodes in a row and that equals one <laughs> revival episode. If you think about it. <laughs> okay. That's a good point. I don't know. I think there's some sort of mental block yeah. with that. It's like, well, I'm going to be sitting down for an hour and a half mm -hmm. when really I do that all the time anyway. Well, and one thing is with TV shows, I think one of the reasons why it's so popular to binge an entire season of a TV show but not binge, like, three movies is because 
With TV shows, we get resolution after every episode, every 22 minutes or every 43 minutes. Mm, A movie, we have to wait the whole hour and a half, two hours. So there's some immediacy that I think we like. Us millennials. Well, (laughs) yeah. Well, and kind of with A Year in the Life, the unit is the season, not the episode. Mm. So... You don't really get resolution at the end of yeah, episodes in the in the, the end of the year of a life. It's just like you find some sort of nice stopping point. And granted, that's kind of how the original episodes were, but they couldn't extend one story 22 episodes the same way you can extend a story over yeah. four long ones. Yeah, that's so. true. Well, yeah. I plan to keep up to date, and we will keep everyone up to date on Twitter, I'm sure. Oh, um, yes. But... I don't know. I I think it'd be okay, but I say that with a little bit of with a little reserved because you know, if yeah. if something just goes on and on you get, you get tired of it. And you don't want to do that. You want to mm-hmm. you want to leave wanting more. So Mhm. Well, and I think it kind of de- this of course is always true, but it sort of depends on what we're getting to. Like if we're going to get a way better storyline for Rory, Mm -hmm. then I'd feel a lot better about it. Like, if her character gets better developed and she's in a place that makes sense logically with a freelance career and that is showing character growth, that would be great, and I'd feel a lot better about it. Yeah. And I don't know how they'll get Kelly Bishop to come back. Mm Because she seems pretty happy... Like, on the East Coast, and I don't know. Emily's story seemed dumb. Right. And I could still see conflict between herself and Lorelai because it's not like they patched things over. They didn't say, oh, I forgive you for my whole childhood and adulthood. You know, there wasn't that resolution, but Emily as a character, Mm -hmm. like you said, her storyline just felt done. I wouldn't want her yeah. them to bring in a new man for her. You could see though at the end of the no. at the end of the revival, she was not interested in that. No, which was kind yeah. of funny. I was rewatching that scene the other day, and <laughs> she's like, "Oh, you have to go. Okay, bye." <laughs> I'm really sad. Not never see you again. That's fine. <laughs> okay, thanks for coming. <laughs> Enjoy your trip. Yeah, I have a feeling she never saw him again. Well, remains mm-hmm. to be seen. Dot dot dot. All right, ready to get into Elsa Clunch. Yes, let's talk about it. Here's a clip. Come on, dab on some lip gloss, clear but fruity, maybe a little mascara, wear your hair down and your attitude high. You're like a crazy Elsa clench. Oh, thank you. Come on now, hustle. We got a man coming over. So, Kyla, who the heck is Elsa clench? Well, I certainly did not know when they brought her up, even though apparently she was a household name at that time. From watching the episode, I thought that she was a fashion designer. That's what mm-hmm. it made me think. Like, oh, she's putting together these outfits, so she must be a designer. But she's not. Yeah. Uh, this makes me feel better because I had absolutely no <laughs> idea who it was. I assumed it had something to do with fashion or style. So I had no idea. Is the bottom line. Well, no shame in that. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of context to it. It was just something with clothing, someone who wears clothing, makes clothing, likes clothing. Mm-hmm. But then we found out she is, was a, or is, well, she's alive, but she doesn't do it anymore. Um, <laughs> at least not from what I read. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Clarify. Not dead. She was a fashion journalist. For decades, she was the, yes. when I Googled her, and, you know, brings up other people you should look at, it also brought up Anna Wintour. Elsa Clinch? So oh. I was like, oh, they're equating I- her to Anna Wintour? Like, that's interesting. So she was kind of the, which, Anna Wintour is the editor-in-chief of, which one is it? Vogue, Vogue. magazine, and she's also... The one that Meryl Streep's character and Devil Wears Prada right, is based off of. Right. So. so she has been ruling the fashion world with her bob and blunt bangs for many years yes. now, which Elsa Clench also sported 
but it was dark black yes. hair. I did read in an interview with Elsa Clinch that she did end up changing her hair later in the CNN run of the show. And I think part of the reason was people had started imitating it for Halloween costumes. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so she said it didn't really bother her that it became a joke, but she did change her yeah, hair. So it so. clearly did a little. That's funny. Yeah, I would understand. Yes. I would want to change my look mm-hmm. if people were mocking it. Yes, which I guess that's just prone to happen whenever it's a famous person. Especially when you're in the world of fashion. Mm-hmm. So I did not know who Elsa Clinch was, but now I'm learning she's kind of a big deal. A little bit. Her big career, uh, probably the what she's really known for, is Style with Elsa Clinch. And it was ran on CNN and the intro to it, I thought, was so goofy. It showed an <laughs> S, and then it did a little twirly cursive S around it, and then yes. it showed a picture, and then a T, and then a curl, a cursive T around it, and then a picture, and then a what? And it went on to spell out style, but at least it didn't spell style with Elsa Clunch, because that would have been ridiculous. That would have been really long. Yes. <laughs> yes. Switch it channels. It is firmly planted in the era it was made i the episodes i watched were from the early 90s and late 80s so i don't know if how the theme it's not really a theme song like when it's also not a title card because it's longer so i don't know how it evolved over the years (laughs) Mm -hmm. but the ones that i saw in the late 80s early 90s were very of that era yes it just made me think of like 80s big colorful jewelry Mm -hmm. and the text the font was so 80s yes so i wonder if they kept it all the way because it it ran from 1980 to 2000 Mm. yeah so it went on a long time which is sort of crazy to me that you and i had never heard of her considering we were alive for about half of its run yeah, that that does seem peculiar, but maybe because, I mean, if your parents didn't watch it or your mom didn't care about it. We didn't have cable, so they is wouldn't CNN, have watched oh it. Oh, yeah, CNN is cable. Hmm. Huh. Well, that it that. ran. We missed it, but now we know about it. 1991 designers went to great lengths to offer options for the short skirt. While most say short is here to stay, longer hem lengths are the big change, especially for the hot weather. Legs are still important with the hem falls just below the knee, around mid-calf or down to the ankle. Designers show legs through transparent fabrics, button front, side slips and fringe. She started her career in journalism, primarily in the 50s, and she was using the name Elsa Barker because her Mm -hmm. given name is Aish (laughs) Barker. Whoa. I don't know what it is. A-E-S-C-H-B-A-C-H-E-R. Is that German, maybe? She's Australian, so maybe she has a German background. Okay. And it may not be German at all. It just sounds kind of German. It looks like it with the A-E and the S-C-H and the Baca. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sorry, maybe (laughs) I shouldn't try to (laughs) pretend like I'm speaking German. Um, But she went to Elsa Barker, which is basically the second half of her last name. Mm -hmm. Um, But then when she married her husband, Charles Clench, in 1966, she changed to that name and stuck with that for the rest of her career. And Clench is a pretty cool last name, honestly. I agree. It sounds fashion-y. Mm-hmm. She reported for the London Star and the London Sunday Express. 1961, she went back to Sydney, and she was the regional editor for Australian Broadcasting Network over there, TV Weekly. And then for another year, she was a public relations officer. And in 1966, she moved to Hong Kong. She just went all over the place. And that's when she met her husband. And she was responsible for a trade promotion magazine. And she was also promoting fashion shows. So that's where she really got into it. What a cool... I just think that's so cool. Like a cool trajectory. And that you get to meet, it sounds like, the love of her life who is... Mm -hmm. Like you're both on the road doing those really cool traveling assignments. So that's awesome. Sounds so elegant. Yeah. And find somebody who has the same interests as you. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be ready to live that fast lane life. Yeah, together, and you're, like, pushing each other. 
Mm -hmm. Then they moved back to New York. Or no, they didn't move back. They moved to New York. And she reported for Fairchild Publications, which owns different publications. Okay. I, <laughs> I didn't look that up. <laughs> About fair children? Yes. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> uh, so then 1972, she left there and went to Vogue as a senior fashion editor and writer. So that is where Elsa Clench mm. became fashion Elsa Clench. So another overlap with Anna Wintour there. With yep, Vogue. Yep. Anna Wintour, I believe she took, I read that she took over after Elsa. Ooh. So. So maybe she paved the way for Anna Wintour and her bangs. Yeah. Maybe Elsa was the original bang wearer. Whoa. Interesting. She originated the bangs that Anna Wintour is known for. This just in, Kyla and Taylor have uncovered a super scandal about bangs. Anna Wintour, they're not original. They're from Elsa. Stolen. <laughs> or given. <laughs> yes. Mm. Were they given with a blessing or were they taken from her identity? <laughs> oh my goodness. Scandal. Yes. We are really good at real journalism. Yeah. We're <laughs> going to start a mystery podcast coming up next. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Look for it in your feed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But she only stayed there three years, which is kind of surprising, because I feel like Vogue mm -hmm. is, like, the place. But she became mm -hmm. senior fashion editor, so same position at Harper's Bazaar. And then she was okay. fashion editor at the New York Post. And then that's when she went on to her first television assignment in 1978. So just two years before she got the show that ran for two decades, she was having her first mm -hmm. TV experience. Whoa. So that's kind of impressive. Yeah, that's awesome. And then... There she was. And Style with Elsa Clunch was the first regularly scheduled uh, TV program in the U.S., which was reporting exclusively on fashion, beauty, and then also home design. So oh. I did find some reports of her that she did interviewing interior designers. Okay. So gotcha. that was pretty interesting. I, did I not... thought the furniture was pretty ugly, but <laughs> it's only because it's been a couple decades. So Yeah. They're... Okay, so I have a soft spot in my heart for 80s pop culture, but it is very of that time, and there's something about 90s stuff that I feel like is just did not age well. Like it was the leftovers mm. of the 80s. Right. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I And I kind of felt like she was saying that in some of her episodes of fashion because i also watched early 90s which is kind of funny we both end up watching like similar like same yeah. time period but she commented on it's moving from the 80s into the 90s a new modern look but still with mm -hmm. i don't remember but it was i think you're right it's just kind of like yeah i only a little yeah, well, and I was watching, I think, some of the reviews of the 1991, I think, Fashion Runway, and so it was sort of, like, she was saying, the 90s have finally cemented their look, and they know what it's going to be. Maybe it was yeah. 93, but they'd finally settled into their place, and it was actually really funny because they had all these clips with designers like Isaac Mizrahi and Michael Kors and Ralph Lauren and people who are still here really influential today mm -hmm. <laughs> and my sister and I have loved shows like Project Runway I mean we were really into that uh, we still are and then there was another show that Isaac Mizrahi was a judge on that, that I don't think lasted very long that we watched for a while and so mm -hmm. I was just sending her pictures as I was watching it I'm like oh my gosh look at Michael Kors and like <laughs> he looks so young and like he's talking about all these 90s fashions and I'm going okay, just wait. In 20 years, you're going to be on Project Runway, and you're probably going to be saying all these looks look matronly and that they're so out of date. So, you know, as they say in fashion, one day you're in, and the next day you're out. As you know in fashion, one day you're in, and the next day you're out. It was interesting to see the designers on camera because those are people I never see on camera or in a photo because... You just see their clothing. So mm -hmm. some of them were really old still. <laughs> like, I was like, how are you still creating clothing? But maybe they're not. It's just their name. Well, and some of them, they were 
designing for other lines at the time. So, like, they were Mm. the head designer at Versace or something, but then later they started their own lines. Oh, yeah, that's cool. And one fun thing that I did see when I was watching some of these episodes was I, well, they did a feature on Naomi Campbell, and that's just I watched that one. Yes. We watched, like, the same, that's... (laughs) Did well, we I watched same several. I watched several episodes, but that was one of them. And they went to her apartment or her hotel room or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, she was such a goofball. But then I also saw in the background, not featured, Tyra Banks in several runways <gasps> shows. She was on Michael Kors gotcha. and some others. And I was like, wait, that's totally her. And I had to pause it and look. And so I did recognize some faces, mm-hmm. which is kind of funny. Especially Tyra Banks, because I remember watching her talk show over the, in the summers in high school. And, mm-hmm. uh, of course, America's Next Top Model. Yes. So good. America's Next Top Model is... Jasmine. Well, there was one that they were giving a rundown of all the major models that were getting a lot of attention. She was doing a report on how much models were getting paid Hmm. to be, maybe it was, I guess that was not the Naomi Campbell episode then, but she was talking about just how much they get paid and getting different opinions. Like some people were saying these women should totally be paid hundreds of thousands of dollars because... Maybe the clothes are just okay, but they look so great on her that when women see it, they'll go, oh, Mm. like they'll realize like what they like about the piece or Mm. maybe the clothes are, they're not bad. They're just not special. Mm -hmm. But then there were others that were saying the, uh, it was one of the designers and he was saying, I'm not paying them because I want them. I'm just paying them because I need to show my clothes somehow. Mm. So yeah, it was interesting to hear the different perspectives on that. Two totally different ways to look about it. I feel like the second person is a little more pride (laughs) than the first person. Yeah, but it was interesting because they kept listing. They were saying these are the, you know, 10 most popular models today. And some of them like Cindy Crawford or Naomi Campbell Hmm. and several other ones. I was going, oh, we still talk about like I know who they are. I don't know who Elsa Clinch is, but I know who they are. Yeah. So. And it's still a big thing. I mean, we've got Gigi Hadid. We've got Carly Kloss. We've got Jordan Dunn. We've got Cara Delevingne. So, I mean, I feel like mm-hmm. it goes through cycles. Yeah. And now even with with social media, I think we have like social media mm-hmm. stars who are models. So Tyra Banks, she became a household name because she had several television shows. Mm-hmm. And Heidi Klum, she's been in movies I th- or TV shows. Yeah. She's been on those. And so, you know, how would we have known all those other models? Well, now we have social media, so they don't need a TV yeah. show. That's so a great showcase point. Themselves. Well, and I guess also for me, I've been an in-style reader for since I was in high school. So... Hmm. Um, one of my dearest friends from college, she is a huge fashionista. She loves fashion magazines. So I'll ask her about trends that she is more in on the know <laughs> than I am. Um, but I kept noticing, maybe this was two years ago, I kept flipping through magazines and going, that's the same model over and over again. And so I would start mm-hmm. texting her pictures and say, who is this? And she'd say, oh, this is so-and-so. And so now I can recognize Cara Delevingne or Gigi Hadid or Martha mm-hmm. Hunt. Um, also, Taylor Swift's Instagram and social feed is helpful for that because she's friends with basically all of them. But Seriously. I know. I. It's just funny how they all know each other. She's the one who first told me, oh, here's who they are, and they're really popular, and this person really likes to work with this designer, and he keeps using her for his collections, that kind of thing. The 90s fashion has ushered in the superstars, the glamorous high-profile models who can demand as much as $10,000 a show. As they sometimes do five shows a day, their weekly salaries can quickly climb to six figures. 
the question the fashion industry is asking. Are the models worth the money they get, especially in these times of recession, or does their high profile detract from the very clothes they're supposed to be selling? The models say they're worth every cent they get. Designers are divided about whether the models are worth the money. We're about clothes. I mean, I'm designing clothes. And the model, I use a model to express uh, uh, the attitude of, of, of the clothes. And the model is, is not the point. Then we're paying, designers are paying a lot of money for nothing because the idea is to focus on the clothes. The jury is still out. If the superstars sell the clothes, they'll continue to get the high fees and perhaps even higher. So the more research I, we've done into Elsa Clinch, the more I realize she's a lot bigger deal <laughs> than I knew. <laughs> So I read a couple interviews with her, one from The Observer and one from The New York Times that came out within a few months after her show ended on CNN. And I'm, it's a little, in these articles, it's a little like, mm, what happened with her show ending? Um, mm-hmm. But fun fact, her show started the day CNN premiered in 1980. So she was part of the original really? programming. Yeah, she was part of the original programming on the channel, and her show ended when they were absorbed by AOL Time Warner. Interesting. So, so she was there. She was the original group. Yeah. So she basically said it was an easy time to exit. Like, she had wanted to be on the show for 20 years, which I don't know when that desire started. Like, that seems really ambitious. To say in your first year you want to go 20 years, but maybe mm-hmm. if you've been there 10, that seems a little more normal. So, but it sounds like there was a really a gap after she was gone. So, in this interview, one of these interviews, she said, When I go up Madison Avenue, they are weeping. They say, there is no one. They say, we sold so much through you. And this is in these fashion stores <laughs> on Madison Avenue. And the customers don't come in and say, I saw such and such on Elsa Clinch. Have you got that in stock? That now is a thing of the past. <laughs> so apparently she was quite the influence there. And the, one of these articles compared her show to the fashion world's must-see equivalent of Monday Night Football. Wow. Mm-hmm. That is a high compliment. But also, I thought she was a really cool person because it sounds like she really carved out this niche spot that was a really good place for her. Somebody else said, before anyone in television really thought there was a hunger for it, meaning fashion programming, she went out and said, if you build it, they will come. And you know what? They did. <laughs> totally accurate. And she really stood out because, and actually this is something I noticed when I watched it, even before I read the article, she never did catty. Uh, She was never insulting people's designs or Mm. trashing, not doing the what not to wear, not doing the worst of. She was always just talking about what she liked and just basically doing reporting and Mm -hmm. presenting what was going on in trends. And I really appreciate that. Yeah, she kept it very journalistic. Yeah, and also just finding the positive or finding the trends, which I think makes a huge difference. I don't in, personally don't enjoy the, like, oh, who wore it best? Well, this person looks terrible in it. She also had a lot of fashion experience. We talked a little bit about that with journalism or her experience at Vogue and her experience at Harper's Bazaar before, but she was really confident in what she knew, too. So this is a quote from one of her articles. She said, I don't think fashion needs another thing like celebrities or supermodels to hang on to. My reports were more in depth because I really understood. So she knew Mm -hmm. what was going on with the fashion because she'd worked with people who knew about fashion. Mm -hmm. Another person said, Elsa was pretty much single-handedly responsible for training women to go to their TVs at 10 a.m. on a Saturday morning to see the (laughs) Valentino's Fall Collection. (laughs) One person said she's the Obi-Wan. I'm assuming they mean the Obi-Wan, like, fashion correspondent. (laughs) The Obi-Wan? Yeah, like, basically just, like, she's the Obi-Wan of fashion. Like, maybe she's just providing guidance, and she just knows everything. Yeah. So that's kind like the only con- I know it's the only context though. It was said by Robert Verdi, another Metro Channel correspondent. Hmm. So there you go. 
Another fun fact, during her 21 years at CNN, she was never allowed to get freebies. So, to Hmm. try and prevent any influence on her reporting. So, she could not get any free clothes from designers, which I think that almost seems like a drawback to me. I mean, I understand integrity. That's important. But, I mean... Mm -hmm. If you're hanging out at the runways, that would be really tempting for me. Yeah, well, that keeps her, I mean, that would be a journalistic standard, I would think. You know, if if you're reporting on anything else, it's like you wouldn't take favors Mm -hmm. from people you're reporting on. But I hope that designers gave her tons and tons of retirement presents when she left because they owed her a lot, it sounds like. Yes. So I hope, hopefully for her that did happen especially because this is actually probably one of my favorite quotes that I read in these interviews she said I'm so tied up with fashion and design it almost seems impossible to live without it it has consumed my life Hmm. and so at the time she was trying to figure out what the next chapter was going to be because she just finished her show but she didn't want to leave fashion she knew she loved it she was a little bit of a groundbreaker did her own thing did something new did what she loved Mm-hmm. And she was great at it. Go Elsa Clunch. Woohoo! I did enjoy her style of reporting. It just felt very fluid and relaxed. It was just really easy to watch and listen to her. And I mean, you're just watching runway shows and then you're seeing designers, but you're also seeing their clothing while she explains to you what you're seeing and why they made it that way and why those Mm -hmm. colors and I thought that her interviews with designers were really genuine and insightful yeah I have never viewed fashion as quite that in depth Mm -hmm. like there was a lot of thought that they were able to explain to her and she was able to draw out of them I was really impressed by that Mm -hmm. I would watch the show if it were on now obviously these episodes are a little dated so it doesn't really make sense to watch the old episodes but I was thinking if this is on this would be a good show to fold my laundry to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I mean that as a compliment, not as an insult. This would be a good <laughs> show to have on while I am cleaning the house or working on something and just catch up what's going on with the trends. Yeah, I'm a fan. A little late, but I'm a fan. <laughs> yes, a little late. We kind of missed the boat, but that's okay. our next segment we're going to do something a little special in the style of Elsa Clinch. I know that we said Elsa was totally positive about fashion but we're gonna see if we can be totally positive about fashion now and we are going to actually rank the outfits in this episode of Gilmore Girls Kiss and Tell and we are not just talking Lorelai and Rory here. Mm -mm. We are going through we are talking Luke Plaid Danes. We are oh talking my. Mama Kim. We are talking. <laughs> oh boy, we are talking Dean. So, uh, Kyla, should we dig into this? Uh, um, let me get my Elsa Clench persona ready. My mm, yes. And as a side note, we know this is a podcast, and so you cannot see this. But we are going to have everything up for you on our Tumblr, which we are going to be debuting. All the pictures will be available. We'll describe them for you a little bit. And all of these are in chronological order of the episode. So if you're watching Mm -hmm. the episode, you can follow along. Follow along. Mm -hmm. All right. So in this first scene, we see Lorelai and Rory. And Lorelai is sporting a classic leather, black leather jacket Nicely Mm. tailored, narrow shoulders, and she is pairing it with a dark brown turtleneck and a light brown skirt. Very Mm. heavy on the neutrals this season for Lorelai. Yes, I think she's going a little bit bold because I love her nice twist here, the leather take on the classic Mm -hmm. blazer, but she's also a little ambitious mixing the black and the browns. Yes. Also very bold because no underwear as she mentions (laughs) none of that who needs it (laughs) (laughs) so kyla what would you rank this outfit um you know i am going to give the leather jacket a five out of five but the outfit as a whole i'm going to give a a three because 
of the leather jacket. <laughs> mm. I'm going to go a four out of five on this one. Wow, interesting. I, I think I just really like how bold she was with the leather, the mixing. The, I don't love the mixing of the black and the brown, but she makes it work. And the no underwear, does that mm. help your number two? I just, it, yes, it, it, it tributes to the boldness. <laughs> Okay, we're going to move on to our next victim. I mean, <clears throat> fashion, <laughs> fashionable person. Uh, mm-hmm. The person, my namesake of Stars Hollow, Taylor <laughs> Dozy, who is sporting a nice cardigan, as per usual. Uh, and is that, yes, a plaid shirt underneath wow. and a button for the Autumn Festival. Kyla, how do you feel about this outfit? You know... I am a sucker for plaid. I think it is quite attractive on men. And the sweater, it makes this outfit really does remind me of outfits that my significant other would wear. Oh! So I actually quite like the sweater especially. I'm going to give this a five. Wow, Kyla. I... Wow. Okay. Well, as much as I uh, love sharing a name with a character on Gilmore Girls, did it really have to be this character? I think I'm only going to give him a two. That cardigan could... uh, I'm sorry to your significant other, but... But the the buttons, the collar, folded so elegantly. The two is because of the town spirit. (laughs) Fair enough. Oh, moving on some more plaid yes luke rocking his normal plaid i'm gonna give this uh a a three because it's basic luke yeah nothing special here Mm -hmm. although i he is wearing a long sleeve gray t-shirt underneath which and the with the button up open and i think open button open plaid shirts and open button ups in general just look bad. They should the buttons need to be used. Okay. That's why they're there. <laughs> and the green backwards baseball cap. I want his blue one. I'm going to give this outfit a two. Okay. Alrighty. And then moving on, we're now in Dozy's market and we've got Dean. Oh boy. <sighs> oh Dean. Oh Dean. Sporting the, the he- middle hair part and mm-hmm. the Dozy's market apron. Yeah. I'm going to give this a one, Kyla. Yeah, he. there's just not much recovery, although his shoulders are nicely displayed in mm-hmm. the dark shirt he's wearing. <laughs> so, yes, classic 90s boy, heartthrob hair. I'll give him a one and a half. Oh, mm, that's generous of you. <laughs> And um, then L- Rory returns home after she has told Lane about her her kiss in the supermarket and finds Lorelai sitting on the floor on the phone, surrounded by everything from the fridge, because the fridge yes. is making a worrying noise, in a tie-dye t-shirt. Oh my gosh, are those pink clogs? Yes. Very and pink. And some sort of bandana. I think it's crocheted. Oh boy. Ooh, I do. Nope, nope. I like the color of the shoes, but they should be on a shirt or a purse. <laughs> and a different style. Yeah, I have to give Lorelai a one for the shoes. Mm. I'm going to give her a two because it's very Lorelai. It expresses personality. Mm-hmm. But the tie-dye crochet magenta combo. Mm-mm-mm. No. Not stylish. Although, do you notice, now that we have a screenshot of this, well, first of all, that green, the blue Tupperware container and the green top, Mm -hmm. my parents had those Tupperwares growing up, but also, she has cans on the floor. Cans do not belong in the fridge. That is a great point. Why would she have canned food in the fridge? I do not know. I don't either. But that's Lorelai for you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm surprised she had anything in the fridge, to be frank. Yes. Ha, speaking of Franks, there is a sausage link. (laughs) But Nice, (laughs) nice tie in there. And several cans of whipped cream. Thanksgiving has a lot of it. And Lane and Rory are 
doing some sort of fundraiser dressed as pilgrims. While they look kind of cute as pilgrims, they're also dressed as pilgrims. Yes. With the classic white bonnets and white large circular collar over black. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. And the autumn I... festival pins. Yes, again, the pin. You know, I remember having to dress up as a pilgrim for a school play in middle school. Mm -hmm. And I did not want to wear that bonnet. I was very embarrassed. <laughs> Even though it was for play, I was quite upset. And I believe I went out on stage without the bonnet. And the teacher scolded me. But that was it. And it was worth it. <laughs> so because I feel their pain... I'm going to give them a two and a half. Mm. You know, it reminds me a little bit of how I took off my cap during our graduation ceremony because I hate those things. They are flattering <laughs> on no one, much like these pilgrim bonnets. So I think I'm going to give them a two because they look cute in them, mm -hmm. but also they're pilgrim outfits. Moving right along to Mrs. Kim. And Lorelai in a new outfit. Mrs. Kim sporting a classic button-up mm -hmm. and a light blue cotton blazer. <laughs> and Lorelai, classic white tee underneath a zipped-up black jacket with a splash of color on her collar. Yes, and the splash of color red matches the red um, strap of her back. Yes. I, I like Lorelai's simple put together outfit she looks like she looks stylish but casual so yes. i would give her a four and mrs kim mm. that cotton blazers should not be <laughs> so thin and cottony and wrinkled <laughs> and wrinkled i do not like her outfit although it is very mrs kim so i'll give her a two mm. I think I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with the two for Mrs. Kim as well, but for Lorelai, I'm gonna go full on five. I think wow. her hair is on point. I think the simple diamond stud earrings look great. Mm. And as you will see in our next screenshot here, she is a vision next to Luke in his red plaid and green puffer vest. Oh I mean my. They I think do match. This is the perfect outfit for her to learn about secondhand her daughter's first kiss and then vent about it to Luke. This is the outfit you wear <laughs> when this happens. I can't disagree with that. So. And Luke's outfit. Ah, light wash jeans, mm. a black long sleeve tee exposed by his red plaid button up, which is again unbuttoned, but the green puffed vest yes this looks like an outfit i would wear except the butt the plaid shirt would be buttoned up mm. i have a, have a soft spot for puff jackets as i called them when i was a kid i had a pink one and i was mm. mocked for it but i loved it and now i have a red one and now i want this green one i'm going to give luke a solid five I think I am too, because he just <gasps> wow. looks very handsome. Also, mm -hmm. the lack of buttoning does not bother me nearly as much as it does you. So Thank. then, Lorelai goes home, takes off the jacket for just a simple white tee, and confronts Rory, saying, Have you kissed any good boys lately? <laughs> I love that. So direct. <laughs> so, yes. And I'm not exactly sure what Rory is wearing. It is some sort of... Black Swe hoodie? Sweater? Question mark? Oh, Rory. It's black. It has a hood. Now, I will say, in her defense, as the run of the show goes on, the more fashionable Rory gets, uh, her character seems inversely related to the strength of her fashion. Meaning, the more fashionable she gets, the less great of a person she is. <laughs> so in that That'll sense... Happen. I love seeing the sweater, but in terms of pure fashion, it's pretty blah. I'm going to give it a one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd have to agree with that. It's, But it, I appreciate her being comfortable wearing what feels nice. So, you know, I like hoodies. I'm going to give her a three. Oh, way to go. And now we're to the outfit that this episode is all about. The episode that inspires Rory to call her mother 
Elsa Clunch, a crazy Elsa Clunch, though. Clothes all over the bed, and Lorelai picks up this red long sleeve top. And here's how she describes it, because I don't think we could describe it any better. <laughs> this says, hello, I'm hip and cute, but also relaxed, since this is something I just threw on, even though it looks fantastic on me. Well, I would give Rory kudos because the red of the sweater matches the red vines that they watch for their movie night date. <laughs> I think it's not quite as pizzazzy as Lorelai says, but it is nice. I think it's solid. I'll give it a four. Mm-hmm. Plus, she wears it with the bracelet Dean gives her, which is a great choice for yes. accessorizing. Yes, I will. I, this is very Rory early, early Gilmore Girls because it's plain. But she wears it with attitude. Mm -hmm. So I'll give her a four. Yes. Solid. (sighs) And that concludes our Elsa Clench fashion hour. Woohoo! And full disclosure, we didn't talk about everyone in the episode because, or every outfit, I should say, because there's only so much you can say about Dean's Dozie's Market (laughs) apron. And. Multiple green puff jackets. Yes. Some better than others. There it is. Style with Kyla and Taylor. Mm Mm-hmm. Coming soon on a network like CNN near you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Not only are we going to find 20 eggs within the hour, but we're going on to find 25, and then 30, and then 35, and then 40, and then 45, and then 50, until we find all 59 and take back the square! Yeah! All right, Kirk, you're in luck because I found another Easter egg. Whoop, whoop! Woo! So this one is about Suki. And for me, it solves a great mystery about her in the revival. She did not abandon us. A six-month sabbatical, that's what she said. She was going to clear her head and come up with new recipes and then be back. But that was a year ago. Well, what can I say? She found a calling. Really? What's her calling? Michelle. No, I'm just curious. Describe what she's doing up there, up in the woods. She's working with Dan Barber at Blue Hill Farm. Doing? Well, she is helping him develop food growing techniques and cultivating the evolution of fruits and vegetables, which helps the people who eat them and, I don't know, the saving the world. It's on the website. We talked about in our revival episode, our revival commentary episode, that we were confused by Suki's need to garden and we understood it was because Melissa McCarthy could not be there, but yes. it was still a strange reason but guess what here's the thing taylor what they alluded to this in season six of gilma girls that it was going to happen wait what suki says so herself what listen listen to this clip hey i have to go to china enjoy your flight i need inspiration i need ideas i'm tapped out boring you know what's on the menu tonight what goose with oyster stuffing what? I know, but that's all I could come up with. And the only reason I thought of that was because Dee Dee just learned duck, duck, goose, and the ducks look puny, so there you go. Well, say hi to Yao Ming for me. Will do. She needed inspiration. Yes, she was feeling tapped out. And if you noticed, the food items that she was using were not vegetables, were not fruit, were not things that grow from the ground. They were animals. And she went off well. to who knows where for farming. <laughs> I love that. She's restoring her faith in fruits and veggies. Going mm-hmm. a little paleo. Yes. Which I guess includes meat, too. She's going more vegan then, I guess. Yes. Yes. So, there you go. Suki was feeling that way in season six. She lasted through season seven. But then after, she just had to go find some new inspiration. So, there you have mm-hmm. it. Maybe this is even something Amy Sherman did. De- Amy Sherman Palladino had in the back of her pocket as something like maybe she knew Melissa McCarthy was going to be a huge deal in the world of comedy someday. (laughs) She predicted. Or maybe she just thought it would be fun to have a storyline where Suki goes off and learns about some weird fruits and veggies in a commune and then comes back. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I like that. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. It was cool stumbling on that. So... So there you go, Kirk. Another egg. The reason for Suki leaving you and not cooking you foods. Although you usually ate from Luke anyway, so I guess you were okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you. So watching these episodes of CNN or CNN style with Elsa Clench definitely helped me understand what was actually going on. So it wasn't that Elsa Clench was the person creating the outfits. Mm -hmm. Uh, just as Lorelai wasn't designing these clothes it was just the person telling you how these fit together and that's what Lorelai was doing for Rory was saying hey put this with this and we're at too high (laughs) and you're golden and that's what Elsa Clunch did she just told you how how to put these together and why they go together so I think it fit really well yeah and she was the one who made women want to check their TVs at 10 a.m. on Saturday to learn about Valentino's new collection. Mm -hmm. And also, I think that's a good comparison because Lorelai is, as we said, her fashion is a little hit or miss, but it's always got her personality and her style, Mm -hmm. and you can tell she loves experimenting with it, and she loves being bold and funky, whereas Rory at this point in her life is pretty much... Like, she's with sweaters and jeans, which, Mm -hmm. for the record, that is totally okay. And I, when I'm not in my style persona, I'm like, Rory, wear whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I think that, in this sense, Lorelai is the one who's showing her, giving her more insight into the fashion world and helping Rory become, or learn more about that and make that part of her life. Mm -hmm. And one thing about this reference is that it... They would have known Elsa Clunch at that time. So this wasn't an old TV show or a person who wasn't working anymore. She was, her show was on at the time they gave the reference. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of different from other references. So Rory and Lorelai probably watched the show together. Yeah. Totally see them doing that. If they're up at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Rory probably is. (laughs) Lorelai, eh. (laughs) And now I think Elsa Clinch is awesome. And also a nice Mm -hmm. tie-in because Rory wants to be a journalist. Yes. Not a fashion journalist, but still. Yeah. And I think Elsa Clinch is a pretty good role model for her as someone who is staying objective and also um, doing good reporting and investigating. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, fashion, that's not the most investigative uh, category, you might say. Mm Mm-hmm. But there's definitely something to be learned. Mm -hmm. And she treated it more as a feature piece and as factual as opposed to getting sucked into having to be on trend and what you have to wear now. And it didn't have that feel. It was very journalistic. So I appreciated that. Agreed. Rory could too. Cool. So that's our show. (laughs) So that's our show. Let us know what you think about Elsa Clench, and you should totally check out some of her episodes. It's pretty funny to see all the leopard print in some of the runway shows Mm -hmm. at the time. But we'll post links to that so you can find those on our Twitter and on our Tumblr that we're premiering when this episode drops. So look out for that. Yes. And it's so it's a show podcast.tumblr.com because some silly person has the domain so it's a show.tumblr.com and they have never even posted anything. And I can't decide if that makes me more mad or less mad that they have posted <laughs> nothing. I think more. More, yeah. Give us the give us domain yeah give us the domain not that we've asked you but if you're listening because maybe you thought i like this name and here's a podcast with this name we'd love to hear from you person (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but let us know if you found out anything about elsa clench that we should know we'd love to hear about it you can tweet at us at so it's a show we are also individually on twitter i'm t blake 24 and i'm kyla kathnadu k-y-l-a-c-a-r-n-e-i R-O. And you can email us at so it's a show at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And rate us, share a review on iTunes. We'd love to hear what you think and what you want to hear from us next. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, our next episode, we're just going to leave you with this clip. Let you wonder a little. Oh, is that you guys? Yes, it is. That is our wedding picture. It's an amazing dress. It should have been. My mother had three seamstresses working around the clock making it. You still have it? It's upstairs packed away somewhere. 
I'll save it for you if you like. Oh, Emily, Roy's too young to be thinking about things like that. Oh, Richard, please, every young girl thinks about her wedding. I know I did. I knew from the time I was 12 that I wanted lilies and orchids with a silver bow wrapped around them for my bouquet. Hmm. You also knew that you wanted to marry Errol Flynn. Really? Grandma had a thing for the pirate guy? I did not have a thing for the pirate guy. She was mad about him. She even tried to get me to grow one of those little mustaches. You're kidding. Richard, stop. She wanted me to swing from a chandelier. Oh, now you're just being silly. Luckily, I was on the fencing team at college, or I would have married Lucinda Lester by now. Actually, Lucinda Lester looked a lot like Errol Flynn. <laughs> I should have married her. It would have been very modern of me. <laughs>